Basically, uh, songs I don't normally do live. They're more folk based. Some blues in it, but uh, it's very stripped down. Uh, not a lot of. It's uh, not a lot of big production. It's very straightforward. Uh, 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 more storytelling. I wanted to do an acoustic album for a while, and because I write a lot of songs, not all of them are blues songs, I do a lot of acoustic writing, and I feel like since I don't perform them very often unless I'm doing a solo show, it'd be kind of a waste not to record them and have them available, and uh, so that's basically the, the incentive behind that, the driving force, is just a desire to get these songs recorded and, uh, and uh, make them available. It's, it's kind of a uh, random process. Sometimes I get a, a really uh, good musical hook in my mind and I build some uh, chord progression around it and maybe I have some lyrics hidden away somewhere that I haven't thought about for a while and I find those and put them on there and fit. Sometimes I hear a, uh, a song that has a chorus that sounds like one thing but it says something else and I like what I thought I heard so I go ahead and put that together, you know. Or I hear somebody say something uh, in a kind of witty way and I use that for a, a, a lyrical hook or someone gives me an idea like a song I have called uh, You and I was written basically because I was talking to a filmmaker who I met on the internet and he wanted me to write a song for a short film about two people who were in love but couldn't stand to be around each other and so I just come up with a song about that and so I came up with a song, You and I, which is basically, you know, talking about two people who are in love, but they just can't seem to get along. And uh, so, I mean, it's just, there, there's, it's, it come, it's an inspired thing. It just depends on the, the source of inspiration. With modern technology, you've got all this, these filters and these, uh, these uh, pitch manipulators that someone who cannot sing a note can go in and almost just say a line and the producer can go in there and manipulate the track and, and adjust the pitch and, and do all kinds of uh, modern wizardry to it and make it sound phenomenal. But what you run into is that this is a recording for someone who has actually built as a singer. Unless they're lip syncing, if they sing live, it's just it's not going to work. Uh, but one thing I think has come from this is kind of a rebellion against it. A lot of people are going back to the old-fashioned way, like analog recording. And um, some of them, you know, I just, I, I'm a... I'm of the belief that if you go in the studio and you're going to record a song that you're performing, make sure you sing it in the studio the way you sing it live. You know, don't, because I, I believe it's lying, you know, it's dishonest. I mean, I'm not a, I don't consider myself a great singer, in the sense I'm not technically very, uh, technically um, sound, but I do believe in being a relevant singer, you know, having relevance. And uh, if someone goes in and sings a track and is and manipulated enough, it doesn't even sound like them anymore. It doesn't sound like the person. So modern technology and, uh, it, and you know, since the advent of MTV and music videos, honestly, it's more about the packaging than the music anymore. It's, you know, if you're, uh, that's why it's 
singers are getting younger and younger, and they have to look like they just stepped out of a fashion magazine. Uh, someone like Janis Joplin wouldn't get past being an independent artist. Now, I, today, anyway, but she's one of the greatest performers ever. Uh, one of my favorite singers, and uh, the modern singers, is Adele. I, I think she's amazing. And the thing I like about her is she's broken stereotypes, and she can actually sing. She's not a pinup, you know, she's a, a little bit on the heavy side. She's a pretty lady who can absolutely melt it out. And I would, I would love to see her live. I feel pressured by myself to keep my music strong, not so much current. I mean, I think a, a great song is a great song no matter how old it is. Now I still, when I, um, I still, one of my favorite songs of all time is Only You by The Platters. That's an old song. It sounds old, but it's an amazing song done in a, and the singers were phenomenal. And I'd rather hear that than someone doing a uh, poorly done updated cover of it. I mean, I like old songs. Uh, I think bringing old songs that have been kind of forgotten back to the forefront, great songs, is, a, is an honorable and a necessary thing. I think there's nothing else to remind a lot of the audience, a lot of even performers who might listen to you, to remind them where our music came from. And, uh, you know, there was there was actually good music before 1975, you know, or 1960s. And, um, I like digging back into the old archives and finding um, songs that are in public domain, you know, and, uh, bringing them bringing them out, you know, maybe doing some uh, old lead belly covers, you know, stuff like that. We're still searching <laughs> for the best way to to present that. I mean, there's multiple ways it's been presented. As many performers have performed it, that's how many versions, variations there are. And, um, my idea with that is to keep it as simple as possible. Uh, not to throw, you know, a bunch of uh, passing and transition chords in there, not to to over analyze it or over arrange it. But just to keep it very straightforward and very simple because that's where I think the power comes from is the simplicity of it. But they need to come see us live and they need to buy our products and our CDs. And if they like our music, I ask them to humbly ask them to support us by you know, if they know we're playing in the area, to come on out and see us. <coughs> but um, I, I appreciate everything that, you know, all the support I do get, and I appreciate all my fans. And, um, there's nothing I like more than having somebody come up to me and so on. Just, I really like this music. I'm really glad to see you here. And I'm always willing to, you know, spend time with them. Talk to them.